Hi, what we're going to try and do today is build a simple massing model using Archicad and we're using this um, RCR Architects Museum um, primarily because it's nice and boxy. You can make nice some, some box shapes using uh, Archicad's uh, tools quite easily. Um, so I got my information from DZine, so you can go and have a look at the DZine page. Um, some nice, nice pictures and nice text. Um, so let's jump in. We open up Archicad 19. If you're using a newer version, it's bound to have all the same tools, but not to worry about it. And the first thing I do is drag in a reference image. I'm working on a plan, and Archicad allows you to drag most images from a folder directly into this um, this view. So you can pull some images in and uh, use them as references. I'm also going to pull in a plan, which I downloaded from uh, the internet, so I'm just going to drop that in there. And um, it's just a, an image file, a JPEG or something, so it's a little bit fuzzy. Um, but importantly, it's got a scale bar down at the bottom, so I can get this roughly to scale. So what I'm going to do is go to the Reshape Tools and Resize, and we've got an option to define things graphically. So I can click at the start of that and go to my 7 meters, and then drag it out and type 7,000, and that should take this to the right size. Um, I'm not really worried, I'm just trying to do a kind of rough massing model here. So I'll just pull this down so it's a wee bit more central on the screen. And uh, I've got my, my image there. Now, because my photograph looks one way and my plan is the other way, I'm going to rotate this around because my brain doesn't work uh, jumping from one side to the next. Um, so just turn it around the, the same way so that I'm looking at the same the same view as it were as if it was an elevation. So what I want to do is using my morph tool just uh, go in and rough out some some shapes and because I'm working in 2D as soon as I click on that let's bring the dialog box over just as soon as I click on that I get uh, an option to give it a height. So I'm just going to roughly guess a height and uh, we'll kind of fast forward for for the rest of these uh, adding height for the, the main shapes that we can see on the, the image. And then the shape that links it all will just give a slightly lesser height just so that we know that it sits below it. And then the same for that uh, little linking corridor. And once we've got that done, um, we've got all our, our shapes there and we can then uh, go and select that, or, or one of them, and uh, right click and show all in 3D. Um, and that should generate uh, a 3D image first of all. So that's the, the, the generated plan. It's just a simple grayscale uh, model. Now, nothing is as tall as it should be. Um, and we can see there the, all the masses look very, very kind of squat. So it'd be handy to look at that in elevation. And there's a standard elevation that's, that's added um, but for some reason, uh, every time I do this exercise, it doesn't pick it up. So I'm just going to delete that out and uh, go down to my elevation tool and click across the front of the building, the, the view that I've got, making sure I'm looking at it. Uh, right click on that and uh, open elevation in a new tab. So there we have my uh, elevation view. So that kind of matches the, the image that we had on the, the ground floor. I'm going to pull in another image. This one's even worse. Uh, very, very, very scrubby. Um, so I'm just going to kind of resize it. So if I grab that corner there, I can click and hold at that point and that'll give me a grab point. I can pull that over and I'm going to go to my uh, reshape and resize tool again so that I can pick that corner um, choose a reference length, which is the kind of length of the building there. And I'm going to pull it across to match it to the right size. But something's not right. Um, what I've forgotten is that I turned my plan round. So uh, I'm just going to move that up there and uh, just grab it in the middle and go to the mirror tool or the flip tool and flip it around. So I don't need any text, it's immaterial. But now it's the right way around to match my elevation. So I can drag that down and match that there. 
So back into my uh, reshape tool, um, and I'm going to grab that corner, go over to the other side. Can I get a rough length? The, the line's so fuzzy it's never going to match, but it doesn't really matter. And pull it out so it meets. So most things sort of match up. Um, what I'm not sure of is whether I'm drawing on the ground or, um, or or drawing elsewhere. So I'll pull that up. And you can see the heights are significantly different. But there's I've never been to this building, so there's there's a few level changes. So I'm just going to pull that upwards a little bit um, with a move tool just to check that it's all in the right place. And then I can pull it down. So I'm pretty sure I'm I'm actually dealing with the the kind of lower level when I'm when I'm looking at this. So I just grab near where it is, and I'm going to snap that to the bottom there. Now, because these are morphs, I can I can offset an edge upwards, and you you kind of have to do that twice because you've got uh, various um, you've got a front face and a back face, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, so you pull those up, you're pulling up the front face and then pulling up the back face to match. So in this one, if I pull that front face up and then jump into my 3D view, uh, we can see that it hasn't actually adjusted the whole of the geometry. It's still um, the lower level of the back. So that's why you have to do that, that twice. I'm sure there is an easier way to do it, but I'm kind of lazy and I like to uh, just use the mouse to do most things. So um, that's everything pulled up to, to height. So we know it matches in plan, we know it matches in elevation. Uh, we can see everything in, in 3D. So this is just a really simple massing model at this stage. And you could stop here and do different options. Um, but I want to go a wee bit further. I want to do these fins that we can see on that uh, image there. So there is a tool to offset a face. Um, which, if you just go for it straight away, it distorts the shape. So what you want to do is copy that face inwards. Now, um, I'll just adjust my view so that I can I can see what I'm doing. And I'll grab the top edge and pull it down uh, the highly scientific amount of a bit. Uh, and that creates a kind of inset that I can then push and pull. So in this case, I'm going to kind of inset it back in. Now, we can see there, there's the line of the inset. Now, I could pull that back to that solid line, you know, drop the top and bottom of that inset into it, but um, that kind of complicates things further down the line. So I'm just going to pull it right the way back. Um, I'm not too worried about all the internal spaces that I'm, uh, I'm ruining. I just want the, the, the kind of rough idea of the, the shape of it. So there we've got a, a wall and a roof offset. So the next thing we want to do is think about these fins that are in there. So I can I can put a rough fin in, just using the morph tool again, and then we can see it in, in elevation. But it would be handy to be able to see that um, against the, the image. Now, because that image is so poor, um, it's, it's not the greatest image to deal with. So we'll just highlight that just to check where my first fin is. We can go and find it. And I can use the uh, multiply tool to be able to give myself um, multiple copies of things. And, and Archicad's good because you can work in plan, section elevation of 3D, and it's adjusting the same geometry. So I'm counting roughly those things out, and I'm going to um, multiply seven copies of it. So if I grab one corner and drag that out, I'll get I'll get seven of them. Now it's not looking too good with the shadows behind it. It's not kind of working the way I wanted it to work. So perhaps the elevation probably wasn't the, the best thing to do, but you get the idea that there's there's these fins here. If I jump to my plan, you can see that they're way off. So I'm just going to delete all these and, and kind of start again. Probably should have done to the plan in the first place. So I'll go to that first one. I'm just going to move it across to roughly where it should be. And again, just offset, adjust the back face there so that I've got um, the full depth of it. And again, go to my multiply tool. And uh, this time what I'm going to do is drop that and I'm, I'm going to go in and measure it. And I think oh, well, it looks about 1800 or so. 
So back into my multiply tool and I have the option to create a distance. So if I grab that and, and pull that out, that's not too bad. I'll kind of accept that. It's running off a little bit. Um, so we can do the same for the, the next one. So if I copy one of those across and drop it where it needs to be, and thinking that I've got looks at different measurements, so it's about 1865 or so. So back into the multiply tool, uh, spread, change the, the, the number, and OK that. And that, what that does is it gives me one copy each time that distance is passed. But when I multiply it out, I'm, I'm beyond the final one. So back into it, and let's change the number again. Just go down a wee bit, and I'm short. So that's kind of annoying, but there, there are better options for being able to multiply things, especially if you're working off a plan. What you can do is if you count up the number of uh, multiples that you need and go back into the, the multiply tool and do distribute. So I can say I want 11 copies over that distance and it should spread them out uh, equally. So we actually get something that's pretty close to the plan that we're, we're looking at. So for those final two, I can copy them across and just dump them in place. So we can go back into our uh, 3D view, and there we've got our fins in place and our, our big blocks. So the next thing we want to look at is we've got these uh, sort of linked um, weathered steel boxes and they, they float above the ground so it would be handy to add some sort of ground onto this so the, the tool that we would use is the, the mesh tool so you're, you're, you're kind of dragging that out and it's got this green colour because they obviously know that it's going to be used for ground all the time and we can plus and minus things out, it looks a, maybe a wee bit big so I can grab that corner and, and move it around, now moving it in in two dimensions in the, in, the, in the plan, if you like, rather than moving it vertically at this stage. But if I jump to my um, floor plan, I can see this mesh. Now, it's kind of distracting to have this horrible green color, so I'll go into the settings and change the cover fill to just a, a white, which should reveal our, our building in there. Now, at this stage in the mesh, we've only really got geometry at the, the four corners so we want to be able to add some contour lines so if we go to one of the other plans the, the, the ground floor uh, or the floor below and show that as a reference then we can draw some uh, some curves for our uh, contours now these are just 2d lines um, drawn on a plan at the moment and they're drawn on the plan below so that they can kind of still stay out of the way so but I've got a couple of uh, lines there. I just want one that's sort of near to the inner part of the building because that's the part that really touches the ground. Uh, it's only those boxes that tend to float. And uh, there's one out the, the back somewhere, so we'll, we'll kind of stick another one on right here. And if we select those, we can see that they are sort of individual lines um, with a couple of points. They're, they're splines. So back up to our, our ground floor, and we want to be able to see those through it. So we can do that as a trace reference, but because we've got the mesh there, we can't really see anything. So um, they are there, but they're underneath. So if we go up to the options menu and down, sorry, the window menu, down to the palettes and trace and reference, and there's a little button down at the bottom that says uh, show the reference on top. So there we go, our, our reference lines. So I can now add those lines as uh, geometry points into my mesh. If I go into my mesh tool, so I select my, my uh, mesh first, and then uh, go onto my mesh tool and make sure that I've got that uh, set to jaggy, can't quite think of what it's called. And then I can use the space bar, which gives my magic wand tool um, to select uh, one of those geometry lines. So if I find somewhere where I'm not interfering with something else. It comes up with a new mesh point dialog. So I can add those things as new mesh points. So work my way all the way down 
and uh, if I then go back into my 3D and select it, um, it hasn't changed anything, we haven't given them any height yet, but they're, they're there. So if we, we click on that, we can see all those, uh, all those contours, so we can now uh, go and adjust it. And it's easier to do that in the, in the floor plan. So we jump back to the floor plan and again go to our mesh tool, and if we select uh, one, of those, uh, one of those points, and go to the little Z height tool and give it a height. And we'll say 4,000, 4,000. And as long as we hit apply to all, all the ones in that particular line, contour line will, will uh, kind of fall in line. So we can do the same to each one. I'm just going to step down a um, thousand millimeters at a time. And you can see that our CAD starts adding some triangular geometry here to, to make it all work. So um, we can kind of add all those things in. So we're down to a thousand there. And um, if we open it up in, in 3D again, you'll see my, my original mesh, the, the corner points, um, don't quite work with the mesh. It's kind of going back down at the back because we haven't changed the geometry of those. So we need to go in and, and fix them. So if I select that, I can go in and, and grab um, an individual point, so I'll grab that one there, and just go to the Move tool, and you'll see it'll, uh, it'll go upwards, so we'll give that a height of 5,000, and do the same to the other corner at the back, and uh, we'll have a wee look at the front, because maybe we want to step that down a bit, although it is stepping, it's slightly sloped down at the moment. Um, we'll pull it down and see what it looks like. right down to the corner. I've got a feeling that the contours in the middle that are, that are too close to that edge is going to make that look very steep. Um, so we'll maybe just not do that. We'll just kind of pull it back up to where it was just to give it a bit of thickness. Um, do the same to, to the other side. Now obviously if you were working from real contours you would probably want to, to kind of map all these things out properly. Um, for this purpose all I really want is for the the mesh to look like it's sitting underneath the building. So it's sitting a little bit high just now, it's cutting out the floor of the, the building. So I'm just going to pull that downwards just so it's out of the way and then pick my points that are uh, nearest to the floor level. So I'll just go over to the edge so I don't pick anything up and go to the move tool and making sure I'm holding shift so I'm only moving it up and down on that axis. Go and click on that point. So um, that then gives me a, a kind of model where I can see those those boxes, for want of a better word, are um, kind of floating above the ground. But it's a very kind of static model at the moment. Um, there's not much to it, so we need to sort of add a little bit of life to it. So if we go to the Edit menu, sorry, View menu, keep getting it wrong, uh, 3D View Options and uh, 3D Window Settings, and we can click Sun Shadows. And if we do that, we get almost nothing. Tiny little shadow at the back. We haven't set really very much about it. So if we go into 3D projection um, settings and hit more sun, we can uh, bring up our sun and we can go into project location. So we can um, either set a, an exact location or we can go into uh, cities. So let's go into cities and see what we can find. Uh, scroll down and I noticed there's Scotland, so let's go for Scotland rather than France. So Aberdeen, let's stick that on and hit OK. We can set our time, um, but we'll see what it looks like first. OK that. So we've got a wee bit of shadow, we've got a wee bit of modelling there, so um, that kind of works, works better. And we can see the shadow underneath the, the buildings. So it's just an idea of um, what the building is, is like. Um, so overall it's taken about sort of, uh, 15 minutes to get to this point, which is more than enough to be able to show um, an overall idea without getting too caught up in, in materials. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, you can ask me in the studio.